Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shri Ayer. Last week, our episode on Bollywood was a bumper hit, and we have Sandeep back today with us. And we're going to take a look at the movies that Southwood makes and the movies that Bollywood makes, and try and compare the two. And we'll have some specific instances. In fact, surprise, surprise! Today, an epic uh, um, historical movie is released in Tamil Nadu. Called Ponni in Selvan. Ponni is actually another name for Kaveri. Kaveri's son, Raja Raja Sora. It's about him and his uh, dynasty and so on, intrigues. And uh, so again, the uh, you know history buffs. Everything is back now. Everybody is talking about temple and and so on. So I won't take more of your time. Uh, send in your questions today with Ask Sandeep. And also, please like this video because we would like this thing to reach as many people as possible. Let's welcome the guest of the evening, Sandeep Balakrishna. Sandeep, Namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram, good to see you, Shri again. Yeah, my pleasure, uh, Sandeep. Yeah. Yes, uh, last week we had a riot. I mean, we went yeah, up we and had down a lot of fun. Lane. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. I enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed the whole uh, show. Me, me too, me too. I mean, there's some spontaneous, you know, mm. <laughs> diversions and then coming back again. <laughs> yeah. Funny that we don't say conversions for opposite as diversions. Uh, diversions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like uh, Congress is opposite of progress. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the English language can be quite tricky. So, it can be today, tricky, yeah. <laughs> today's topic. So, <clears throat> we are... We are collectively bundled all woods and mm. would you like to first kind of trace the history of some of these woods like for example mm. Kannada always had some very good serious movies Malayalam mm. thought provoking forward sometimes they've talked about premarital sex many many years ago mm. and, and Tamil was iffy because around 50s the mood changed and they became mm. more Dravida oriented Today, the yeah. reality is that DMK owns the entire movie. Mm. One movie market and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's really a mess there. But mm. Andhra Pradesh, Kollywood has been consistent about showing culture in a certain way. So, mm -hmm. can, we can start from how the, the woods of the South have fared over the years. Mm. Take it away. Okay, sure. Uh, well, you begin with an interesting question. Let's see how we can, you know, unravel right. all the threads. So this wood concept, uh, the suffix wood, uh, it was introduced, as all of us know, by uh, deracinated uh, people in uh, uh, the in Bombay in, uh, right. in the Hindi cinema industry. So the and this change it happened right before our own eyes. Somewhere in the mid 90s, I think there's a lot, there's a serious academic study that needs to be done on, you know, this subtle shift that happened before our eyes without, you know, none of us realizing that it had happened. From when did Hindi cinema become Bollywood? Right, right, right. So that is a phenomenon that needs to be studied. And I think it coincides with, uh, uh, you know, the uh, liberalization that happened in 1991. So <laughs> suddenly the consequences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Suddenly, until then, even in the 1980s, nobody called uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Hindi cinema as Bollywood. Nobody called it. No. Even no. even the hardcore uh, uh, film magazines never called it Bollywood. They used to call it Hindi cinema, or at the most, you know, Bombay film industry or Hindi film industry in Bombay. These were the kind of phrases that were used to describe what is today known as Bollywood. And then all these buggers took over this uh, Karan Johar gang and that second, third generation uh, guys of the established uh, uh, film uh, uh, families. So that happened, uh, you know, in front of our own eyes, like I said. So anyway, but the sad part is that people in the South also began to ape what is known as Bollywood. So Karnataka film industry became sandalwood. Why? Because there is a term... Uh, for Kannada, there's a prefix for Kannada, which is pretty common. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called Kasturi Kannada. Kasturi is a, a tree. It is a bark of a tree, which right. emanates a, 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 a very beautiful fragrance. So Kasturi Kannada, like that, uh, for Telugu, it's called Telugu Tata. means it is uh, lilting, it is sweet, right? Like, like coconut water, things like that. Mm -hmm. So 
kasturi uh, in english as you know is called sandalwood so conveniently they married the two terms and created this bastard term called sandalwood likewise tollywood now we don't know why why i still don't uh, i'm unable to figure out why telugu cinema uh, film industry is called tollywood oh i did this put t instead of b for bombay bollywood they replaced yeah. b with the t <laughs> yeah exactly so it's inexplicable yeah. well okay they call it tamil industry is called hollywood because it is there i think in kodambakkam right kodambakkam it started in kodambakkam yeah. yeah yeah so pretty much uh, you know it is understandable the nomenclature is understandable but uh, right, now right. i don't know what malayalam film industry is called mollywood just <laughs> mollywood yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so what will gujarati film industry be called modiwood <laughs> <laughs> or, or what 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 is bengali cinema called you can't call it bollywood no bollywood is already i don't know <laughs> yes yeah. yes i have no idea kolkata wood gollywood yeah kolkata wood i don't know yeah some uh, i don't know man uh, so it's weird what is marathi cinema being called i don't know right right it can right, be called right. bollywood again although you know marathi cinema unfortunately has been massacred by uh, bollywood by the sheer virtue of you know its uh, dominance in uh, uh, situation location in uh, bombay so anyway that's a story for a different day right so what marathi is the theater question? is very strong i heard marathi theater yeah, is marathi very theater strong, extremely strong we'll come to that later uh, yeah, but yeah. i don't know what it is called shivaji wood what is maratha wood what's it called i have no idea my friend <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, see, you see what happens when you massacre culture like this right 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 this whole aping right. of hollywood as it, as if it is some kind of uh, you know uh, law written in stone that it is a gold standard for cinema perhaps it is in some departments but what is this fascination to ape these buggers from day one from the day hindi cinema started what is or at least after the 50s what is this you know constant uh, fascination or this uh, inferiority complex of constantly looking at the west what is this so look at see there is a uh, bipin chandra pal's son extremely talented man uh, he did his uh, school, i think his college in london and he was very actively uh, involved his name is niranjan pal he was very actively involved in uh, dramatics and theater and you know he dabbled uh, for some time initially in the uh, cinema industry in uh, britain so he has written an extraordinary piece it's published on dharma dispatch this he wrote way back i think in 1915 1920 that period i think before 1930 at, at any rate so niranjan pal was the son of none other than bipin chandra pal so he it's an exhaustive essay where i mean he has given the blueprint for how indian cinema has to be indian including all the commercial aspects like you know what will be the uh, minimum ticket what should be the minimum ticket price and uh, if it is released in india this kind of details he goes and then he makes a very very important point he says that you know if cinema cinema he predicts and uh, the prediction has come true he predicts that you know this mo- this medium this uh, fledgling medium it has enormous power and it can be a very powerful vehicle to transmit the best elements of our culture by which yeah, means unfortunately the best got replaced by <laughs> yeah yeah i will I'll, i'll come to that so the best elements of hindu culture and where do you find this best elements we find it in our society in our family structure in our immediate surroundings in our puranas in our epics you know we are the world we have the world's most copious amount of literature in all streams mostly so he makes a point he recommends that you know if at all we have to transmit our culture to the world show the best elements we have to begin by making a movie on shakuntala kalidasa shakuntala from there we have descended to pure crap like what is that all this brahmastra types right and all these i mean it's so appalling and I, i don't want to use bad language so 
we will let it go so this has been the bane of uh, bollywood and it is no surprise that it has been called bollywood and it's become a mess that it has become today but coming back to the initial days you have a neat uh, you know it's almost like a parallel track almost all movies made in south india which uh, predominantly was uh, uh, ruled by tamil and telugu uh, industries and uh, <clears throat> followed closely by kannada <clears throat> because the market was less very uh, restricted kannada for kannada movies i don't know much about the early days of malayalam cinema so i won't comment on that but what all these three cinema industries were characterized by was they stood like like niranjan pal i'll have to quote his example again they were the industries largely telugu followed closely by kannada they showcase these best elements of our culture yes the pauranic themes the historical themes or even social dramas family dramas so the they were exemplary movies actually when you i'm speaking with a great amount of sadness also because you have lost that you can no longer do a social drama i think we discussed this uh, uh, in a brief fashion uh, in the previous episode you can no longer do a social drama because it's element of stability in the you know that was a bedrock of the hindu uh, family system that is gone very simple extremely simple stories they are so engaging and you can you know tune them you know watch the watch them again and again repeatedly and this is screenplay is horrible there is a lot of innate value so Absolutely. this and you don't see i am making a very clear distinction here you and i am setting aside these pauranika and the uh, aitihasika historical themes deliberately the fount they are the fount of all these social dramas you know in a space of 1 minute in k vishwanath's uh, movie swati mutyam okay there is a village doctor a proper traditional ayurvedic vaidya as they call ved in uh, north india so he is not just only a doctor okay he is also what is today called a psychiatrist right <laughs> and he consoles you know he consoles the grandmother uh, you know who's uh, at that old age she has to take care of this retarded guy played by kamala hasan so he says you know you don't have to you know worry about him you don't have to feel sad about this boy you don't call him retarded he he is swati mutyam mean meaning in tamil it is there sipikul uh, muttu 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 right 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 so he is right. a pearl in the oyster so he says you know this man he knows no uh, treachery he has no bad feeling in the heart he is very transparent and he is actually akin to god look there is no krishna rama here it is just a short scene one and a half minutes and it touches you at many many levels and the scene itself reveals you know how what was the strength of our traditional villages you see this is how we uh, uh uh showcase our culture various aspects of our uh, society in films that whole thing is gone and the tragedy is that you can never you know bring it back the society has been mauled beyond recognition and you see a reflection in cinema yeah. very true very true so um one of the earliest movies about uh, you know itihasas was the 1959 blockbuster called maya bazaar and i hmm. think it was released in telugu and tamil i don't know and if it was also. released in Uh, uh, and Canada also, yeah. and and this dubbed in, this dubbed in Tamil and Telugu, uh, dubbed in Tamil and Canada, Canada. So this yeah. introduced you to Krishna, played by India, N T Ramana, mm. and and mm. it's such a beautifully made movie. By the way, guys, mm. question mm. for you: What is the name of the son of Duryodhana? You may know the answer, Sandeep. Don't say. It. <laughs> What is the name of the son of Duryodhana? If anybody puts it here, we will immediately put it out. So the story is like this: the story is. both arjuna's son and duryodhana's son are vying for the hand of balarama's daughter okay and her name is that also is another question let's next question coming up so 
and and what happens there it's a beautifully made movie very very advanced technology they got a hollywood photographer to come in and do because there are a lot of tricks german in there. german yeah. marcus bentley yeah oh my goodness it's so far ahead of its time and it was a treat to watch because that set the stage for all those uh, itihasas where nt ramarao always played the role of krishna i mean they went into obscure you know stories inside mahabharata and came out to that like for example there is a movie called krishna arjuna yuddham that is <laughs> krishna fight between krishna and arjuna i mean come on now this guy was his ideal disciple when did they fight so there's a story for that and 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 so on and so forth so uh, for about 15 uh, i think 1959 is where maya bazar came 1983 is when ntr quit movies to enter politics so that 24 year period it was i mean he made like i think 30 movies or something like that all of them were you know itihasas out of the world so something similar i haven't seen anybody else do it with such a prompt and such consistency across such a wide Uh, spread of time. A- a- any parallels there, Sandeep? Well, okay. I'll just give you three or four anecdotes about Maya Bazaar because I simply can't resist it. Oh yeah. So the, yeah, the original script for Maya Bazaar, it was a stage script enacted in Canada. It was a stage drama. So the producers, uh, I think Vijay Vahini produced the movie. Yes. So yes. they bought the script from uh, uh, Karnataka. and uh, they you know tinkered with it here and there improvised all the all the nice things and then they presented it on the scene uh, the fact of the matter is that it took a very long time for maya bazaar to shoot but even today the legacy of maya bazaar is so extraordinary that some of its dialogues have become uh, it is said that a lot of the movie titles of telugu movies which followed maya bazaar were right. either bits from the movie's dialogue or bits from the movie's song lyrics yes 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 ahana pellanta yes yes that's the name yes. of a movie right okay so that's a song in maya bazaar then vivaha bhojanambo that is also name <laughs> of a movie right chupulu kalisina shubhavela that is also name right. of a movie and a lot of these dialogue bits also in maya bazaar have been incorporated they have become idioms not yes. just in cinema industry but in the uh, what is known as popular culture in telugu yes 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 so this okay. is the legacy of maya bazaar and it is one of the greatest milestones in indian cinema itself yes so we are like that times Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, just, just let me give you the correct answer. One person has said yeah. the correct answer. Poonam mm. Abi, you are the winner. The mm. the son of Duryodhana, which is in question for this, wooing mm. for the hand of Sasireka, who is the mm. daughter of Balarama, is yeah. Lakshmana Kumara. That's the yes. correct answer. And okay. and there is a hilarious scene where yeah. you know Gatotkacha is you know drafted in to help uh, Abhimanyu win the heart of. Sasireka and he comes up mm. with so many magical tricks that's where yeah. the movie got its popularity and and, yeah. and there are there's a song featuring around Lakshmana Kumara that's one mm. for the ages you guys have to see it doesn't matter if you understand telugu or not telugu is 70% sanskrit i know i'm getting a little rapturous here but do mm. watch that movie i can never tire of watching that movie again no no you can watch it on repeat you know what we used to <laughs> do at dinner time in in my uh, growing up years was back then you had these vcrs right 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 so right one person would get up and you know rewind the whole tape and then come back and then watch the scene again <laughs> sandeep you do it on loop yeah we so, remember we used to we used to rent out these video cassettes yeah, yeah, yeah. did not rewind before yeah. returning it got into a lot of trouble you got into a lot of trouble they, they they would charge a fine and all that the shop right, guy right. <laughs> so, i mean that that is a landmark shri i mean maya yes, bazaar actually yes. that maya bazaar you don't find that story in uh, either the purana or 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 in uh, mahabharata so this is a genius of our uh, dramatic tradition or storytelling tradition whatever you want to call it that you have these raw materials which tradition has given you right so what you do is you use your creativity without destroying the spirit of the original and come up with this kind of spectacular uh, uh, retellings which can be adapted across mediums true, so this true. is the power 
but you know telugu cinema pauranik movie it had a very rich classical tradition to begin with which uh, kannada cinema did not unfortunately have to that extent yes kannada cinema also gave some extraordinary pauranika movies but you have you can't but fail to make a comparison so it is chalk and cheese basically you so know, the uh, what sheer a, yeah, beauty of the language Uh, the sheer staging of the scene and the dramatic elements are pretty much the same and uh, the whole concept of uh, introducing padyams versus poetry uh, within uh, 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 in the movie that kannada yes. pauranika also have that but the richness that telugu brings in that is something original more or less i mean roughly speaking that's true yeah that, uh, so yeah. that yeah you can't beat them that is the only cinema industry that has uh, attained almost near perfection in this uh, uh, in this genre so but more or less kannada cinema pauranikas historicals are all pretty much faithful uh, uh, but that richness like i said that that is missing so um sandeep let's take a quick look at uh, uh, tamil movies then we can mm-hmm. take a look at malayalam so why don't you go ahead and you know recount how you saw the growth of the tamil movie industry well actually my knowledge of uh, uh, tamil kollywood is very very limited but what i can say is uh, their concept of pauranikas which they made which they made very few but uh, most of them i think they became uh, they became blockbusters the unfortunate thing about tamil industry was the dominance of this uh, dravidian so called dravidian ideology almost from day one so that pretty much uh, killed this uh, uh, and otherwise uh, flowering of these tamil uh, uh, classical movies but you have some good uh, examples like you know tiruvelli adal and uh, uh, right, which is right. avayar avayar right 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 all right, some right, of kandan right. karunai all these movies right yes yes so, so they, um, they are emotionally charged and there's some spectacular you know performances but that richness the pauranik richness unfortunately is missing this is yeah, my assessment yeah. the telugu really caught on to that and i'll give you a yeah. brief uh, for our viewers i'll give you a brief uh, history of tamil cinema um hmm. the the two major heroes in the beginning years of uh, movies that is i would say starting 1950 because before hmm. that it was very very puranic it would have hmm. a lot harichandra all these things were there then yeah. th- those that time it was but the the technology wasn't that good so hmm. you know lots of songs and so on but the time they started prospering was when mg ramachandran also called mgr and mm. shivaji ganeshan was his yeah. name is uh, these two were the main heroes and they had a competition who's better and and mm. both of them uh, ended up at and dmk at a certain point of time i'll give a quick story here so uh, it is believed that mgr was born in 1910 1910 and uh, an astrologer told him that you will attain uh, stardom only after you reach 40 so his first big blockbuster yeah, was in that, yeah. 1950 1950 yeah, yeah. He, he, right. he was a late starter yes yeah he was a late starter mm. uh, but he was a very fit man he, he, yeah, he yeah. looked very yeah. very fit for a long mm. time so mm. but the thing here is the interesting story sandeep so he used to wear khadar mm. he was all for this i'm talking about his 30s when he was just a drama artist touring he was born in ceylon and yeah. uh, then he used to tour uh, but he was a malayali speaking person he learned his craft in tamil nadu so they used to be like the touring talkies like the you know dance mm. drama shows they used to do and he was a khaddar wearing god fearing person and it is believed that once somebody took him to meet kamraj who was then himself a budding leader mm. and uh, they said this guy wants to join uh, politics so he said what do you know about politics and then even before he was lo- leaving the room he held at the guy who brought mgr in kanda kanda koothadi la aichindu vare koothadi is somebody who dances you know dance oh. and play guy why are you yeah. bringing you know dancing people into the uh, pol- politics this is serious yeah. business so he heard mm. that so you know mm. what happened he drifted towards dmk mm-hmm. now in the early years of dmk the plays were written by karunanidhi and they used to be yep. enacted by shivaji ganesan not yes. mgr mgr came yes. in the movie phase not in the yes, yes. Not, not in the theater yeah yeah 
not so uh, shivaji ganeshan is in fact the the role shivaji was uh, he played the role of chatrapati shivaji and that's yeah, yeah, where that, that's, his that's how he got his name that's how he got that name his real name is some right. some ganeshan some yes, other ganeshan yes, yes. right 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 right. Yeah. right 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 yeah. so yeah. what happened was uh, but shivaji was always very ardent bhakta and yes. uh, and, and at, at one point of time he said that and, and dmk was completely atheist i mean they're seriously atheist Yeah. And, and NPR sort of kind of coexisted with that, but Shivaji said nothing doing. I am going to go and pray to Lord Balaji in uh, Tirupati, and mm. the entire uh, leadership turned against him so much so that Shivaji Ganeshan quit TMK and joined uh, Congress. Yes. You see how the thing crisscrossed. MGR yes. could have been in Congress. Congress, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Shivaji Ganeshan could have been in DMK. The thing crossed. and and then of course mgr uh, was while uh, you know while in the middle of a shot or something like that at home he got shot with a bullet right around yeah, yeah, the time the 67 yeah, yeah. election so there there was a sympathy vote dmk wrote yeah, the power that, then the mr rest... radha incident yeah right mr radha incident mm, so radha. through all this period uh, there the movies of the, the telugu movies were also being were mostly being made in madras then yes. madras so both hmm. telugu and tamil were made in madras and therefore what no, happened in kannada is, even kannada was made in madras kannada, right yeah the technology was no i guess we had no studios here madras right, was right. a uh, was a mecca for all these film industry south indian uh, cinema correct correct, correct. so hmm. the uh, there were there were only two or three directors who would do these uh, etihasas one of them was hmm. uh, his name was ap nagarajan ap nagarajan tiruvur yeah. chelvar Uh, mm. these are all minutes i mean like a movie will have six or seven small short stories but they are yes, basically yes, yes. talking about the greatness of god and and mm. then he made some really good epics like uh, rajaraja solan of which yes. you are seeing a new turn today mm. called ponniyan selvan we we'll come to that mm. yeah mm. so so anyway so that is how tamil movies progressed mm. karna mm. was a big hit in tamil it was also made in telugu but it telugu, was a big yeah. hit in tamil mm. and Huge that karna yeah, yeah karna was, was played Yeah, NTR played a role in that. He roped and, and, in NTR specifically for for playing that right, role. Right, right, yeah. and and uh, Shivaji Ganesan played the role of Karna. And, and Karna. there's a very interesting story there that uh, mm. you know maybe when you read Mahabharata you don't realize this. So what happens mm. is you know Karna he loses the battle and uh, you know uh, Arjuna shoots an arrow at him. He lays and and he's dying. But the Dharma Devata doesn't. allow him to die because he has done so much dana mm. so the dharma devata won't let him die mm. and she is you know putting flowers on him and and he yeah, is he's lying uh, there and mm. and krishna wants an end to the story so mm. he turns himself into a mendicant a beggar and yeah, he yeah, goes that, there that highly charged song in the climax na huh? yes yes so yes yes ahir yes, bhairav bleeding and all that yeah yeah yes yes ahir bhairav based on ahir bhairav dude bleeding mm-hmm. so he Beautiful goes point. there yeah and he goes there and he asks for the dharma that he has still got mm. and then he he asks that for the so i want all the dharma as your as a gift and then says mm. for this gift you get another some more mm. dharma i want that too mm-hmm. so this mm. is recursion you know and, and he gets yeah, everything yeah. And that's when Karna dies. So this story is not told much in Mahabharata. People don't know about it. So no, no. This is no. This is an extrapolation. There's nothing like course. that in Mahabharata. It's an extrapolation. So anyway, so that that is a whole uh, uh, you know brief uh, history of how you compare. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Tamil cinema missed out, and as a result, you know uh, people in Tamil Nadu also missed out on you know some extraordinary treasures lying in their own backyard. So but but this you know, Bangladesh. Is- Sorry, hmm? go ahead. Go ahead. Politics, yeah. The, the, the yeah, this, movies are no ideology. Completely... Ideology, yeah. politics. You know, you brought in the, this Dravidian nonsense, which uh, infiltrated the film industry much before that in Periyar's time. I don't want to call him Periyar, but whatever. Uh, Ramaswamy Nayakar. In his right, time, right. he and his Gunda gang, uh, they used to stage these uh, street plays, and one of the favorite themes was to set up a mock court. uh mock naraka right where yamadharma raja and chitragupta and all the attendants are there so who are the criminals who are put on who are put on trial indra rama 
Krishna, Sita, all the deities that we worship, Hindus worship, they are, you know, put on trial as accused. And then you twist all the our epics, the original spirit, you twist them uh, to show that, you know, you, you are Rama, you are a bloody Aryan oppressor, this kind of, you know, highly emotionally charged dialogues would be written. So you have a history. This, this so-called Hollywood uh, uh, anti-Brahmin uh, bashing and North Indian bashing is nothing new. It all comes from this street play tradition. Yes, yes. So, so true. So, yeah, true. This, so this is uh, unfortunate. So as we went through the years, you know, hmm. um, Tamil movies became completely left and, uh, hmm. you know, hmm. fake narratives. I mean, hmm. this JB is a good story, but there is always this underlying thing what you mentioned. You know, northern mm. bashing and, and Brahmin bashing. Actually, Brahmin is a symbol for Hinduism, in my opinion. Yes, yes, they, they, yes. They're using yes. And, and see, uh, many see, people... it is damn simple. You you look at you look. Where does this, this so-called Dravidianism take its inspiration from? From the British, from the uh, from all these uh, rascals like uh, Bishop Caldwell. Caldwell, right, 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 right. Even before that, who were the first people to be slaughtered in Masse by Islamic invaders? It was the Brahmins. All these yes, Ahmad Shah yes, Abdali, yes. Sher Shah Suri, Taimur, all these guys. There was one fellow, Butchikan Sikandar, somebody in Kashmir. These buggers used to, monsters used to take pride in counting uh, Yagnopavitas by the kgs. Yeah. Yes. So many kilos and then skulls of Brahmins. So they saw Brahmanas as a cust cultural custodians. Correct, correct. Right. So the same thing, even uh, uh, that fellow <coughs> uh, Robert D. Nobili, initially he called himself a Roman Brahmin. Okay. He used to wear one uh, Yagnopavitam with a, a idol of Christ. Hmm. Within 10 years, and he wanted to, you know, use this motif to convert uh, uh, Hindus to Christianity. That did not work. So he said, you know, Christ is also Krishna, this kind of nonsense equivalences. He drew. Right. When it did not work, when the Hindu Samaj, you know, still had reverence towards Brahmins, they and when whether they had reverence or not is secondary. They were firmly stuck to their cultural and religious roots. So this fellow was so frustrated that within 10 years, the same Brahmins whom he claimed that he worshipped suddenly became the you know disciples of devil. So this is where all your Dravidian guys get their inspiration from. Right, right, right. Those fellows were foreigners. These fellows were our own people, unfortunately. So Jai Beam, movies like that is all a product of this. And and uh, interestingly enough, uh, let's take a quick look at Malayalam movies, Mollywood. Um, I, I, am know totally bit... ignorant. I am totally ignorant of Mollywood, except over the last five, six years. I, watch, uh, I have watched some good investigative uh, movies. But apart from that, there is this, in the 90s especially, some good movies. Like, there is a very beautiful movie called Abdullah the Great. Yes. Then yes. No, no. Your Highness, His Highness Abdullah. And then you had a movie called Ayer the Great. Then you had Mani Chitra Talu. So the, they had some, I mean, that's a different world. But largely, the I can't follow the language that clearly. Anyway, so that's... That's yeah, so, my so exposure to Malayalam. Excuses. Both of us are a little bit light on uh, Malayalam movies. But yeah. it is this. This is true though. They make you think. The movies are serious mm. art. They are not commercial mm. masala like most of the Tamil movies are. Uh, mm. Not commercial masalas. They may have even movies without songs. And, hey, and no, they show no, a lot no, of... no, no, they, no, no. They have, they have their own element of masala. Otherwise, Mamuti and Mohanlal would be nowhere. Although <laughs> all the Suresh Gopi types, they would be nowhere. Okay. They, they would lift Mahindra jeeps with their bare hands. So let's not <laughs> some, some of these. That's true. The, the, the recent ones have been much left. I think Kerala's in the 60s, 70s, 80s were more thought provoking. <laughs> uh, I think things changed for the worse, I guess, after that. But at any rate, if you look at the overall envelope of all mm. these movies, right? Mm. Uh, mm. Today, you can say that uh, after Bahubali, especially after mm. Bahubali, these things are making a comeback even in Tamil movies, like Pony and mm. Selvan is one. And, and mm. once in a while, you will get some of these uh, historical movies. But I think now, and this, by the way, Pony and Selvan is not made by the DMK family. I have to put mm. this thing out there. It is made by another group called Lyca, L-Y-C-A. Yeah, yeah, L-Y-C-A. And, and uh, so we have to see how this fares. 
Uh, I mm. saw some of the graphics. I wouldn't be. I wasn't really thrilled. Maybe I have to look it in an IMAX, IMAX theater to get the pure no, depth. Actually, last time also we discussed, and today also I mentioned that that era where these themes, historical and Puranic themes, movies based on these themes cannot be made simply because those movie makers, writers, directors. they have been totally cut off from their roots they are the third or fourth generation at least third generation of uh, uh, in the film industry uh, whose roots have been cut off how is the language because tamil language is degraded terribly same telugu thing is here not so bad telugu no, is not no, so bad no. well okay uh, yeah to to a significant extent you're right because the language itself in telugu the, it it has a thick element of classicism So yes, no matter yes. how much you want to mangle it, it it becomes very difficult. So what they do, but one thing I'll tell you, most of the mainstream, so-called mainstream directors, you know, all these guys, that fellow who made a so-called biopic on Savitri, right? These these guys, they, you know, they Mahanati. yeah, they Nagashwin, Nagashwin. So they think in English, and you know, they do their script in English. <laughs> so this, uh, it's unfortunate. even even uh, even 15 10 years back this was not the case while they may make uh, uh, you know movies like bahubali and uh, again i have to i don't want to blow my trumpet but just to show uh, simplify it i've written a uh, long form analyzing bahubali from different perspectives dharma dispatch got in right yeah yeah dharma dispatch so very beautiful very nice yeah so that uh, that level of thing is no longer there the talent is simply not there so while they can't uh, tamper with the telugu language per se what they do is it is heavily thickly uh, uh, infused with english amma lunch ki podama yes ee roju na ee roju na ki chaala happy ga undi mummy so this is the kind of dialogue right 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 so no, no, this, you are right you are right yeah ha uh, this same nonsense is in kannada also same thing there's no mm-hmm. difference because you have killed all lang- learning of all languages in from right from primary school right hey um sandeep i was in bengaluru for just one day and mm-hmm. sorry i didn't tell you i was coming uh, no, no I, I, it, it happened in like that and i was in and out and mm. i was just observing the crowd uh, mm. and maybe mm. in a posh area indranagar area but mm. i got to tell you this mm. bangalore fashion sense is mm. the number one today in india mm. is comfortably it? Okay. ahead of mumbai and delhi comfortably ahead comfortably ahead yes mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. And, and and maybe because bangalore has got such a you know it industry mm. that people from mm. all over come but mm. in terms of fashion dressing and things like that they mm. have they have set the bar i could you know close my eyes and listen to the sounds and think i am in silicon valley so <laughs> it was <laughs> something else <laughs> so i get what you saying now so yeah, this is the thing right you've yeah. killed a language you're cut off from your culture your movies will reflect the same thing right why will it be any yes. different yes yes one totally true and, totally true. and other thing is even if the dialogues are in uh, in kannada let's assume 100% of the dialogues are in kannada the tone uh, the wording there used to be a certain standard okay below which you shouldn't fall correct now you can't even you you don't speak like that at home correct right you correct, don't speak correct. like that you don't give those vibes you don't give you don't talk like that even even when when you're very very angry even when you're furious you don't talk like that so this is a level okay. a total gutter level you can't even listen to those dialogues it's that bad and that same nonsense is crept into telugu it has slowly crept in but uh, it has almost become mainstream so true so, so one true. level of refinement used to be there that is no longer there i am so tamil i think the less said the better yes yes whole, uh, whole vul- vulgarization is complete right 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 so they they made a movie on air dakkan's founder uh, what's ah, his name sorry. Oh, yeah yeah captain gopinath cat captain Go- gopinath yeah, surarai putra surarai putra yes. 
Surer mm. reporter. And mm. and uh, if you look at the theme, this is mm. again center bashing, north bashing, and, yeah. and they didn't want to portray the guy. See, Gopinath mm. is an anger. Yes, he's an anger. Yeah. But they leave it out. They leave it out. Yeah. Very convenient. I mean, yeah. you, if you want to say something, say it, be truthful. What yeah. guy got it from nowhere and made it a big name? Of course, yeah. it, it went into the ground again, but whatever mm. it is, the concept was very novel. Yeah. So, so he was an uh, original entrepreneur in that sense. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And so you and, they take him, they take him and you know put him as you know, recast him as some kind of a uh, yeah, yeah, what is that uh, uh, backward cast or whatever nonsense? Why right. do you need this? Everywhere this is happening. Correct, and I'll correct, tell you correct. something, most of these uh, uh, new the so-called new wave of uh, acclaimed directors in Tamil coincidentally or rather not coincident, uh, coincidentally are the alumnus of this visual communications department in Loyola College, Chennai. This is where this rot is coming. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, so the funding that we need to research. See, the funding for Tamil movies is much more dubious than perhaps Telugu. Telugu has. Oh, I don't mm. understand why. I don't understand mm. why. Telugu mm. movies have a fairly good foothold in US. I mm. know many Telugu friends of mine. For them, mm. finishing mm. the day is to watch a Telugu movie. Believe it or yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> and 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 uh, somehow that that industry hasn't. Uh, had mm. so much influence of black money, drug money, mm. LTT money as in, in Tamil movies, it has completely just, it's only next only to Bollywood in terms of the dubious ways in which the movies are getting financed. So when you have well, these dubious ways, mm. the messaging mm. also is dubious. They have a certain mm. narrative. Uh, we are mm. getting a, a, let's see, can we put mm. that thing up please? Actor Surya, yeah. Mm. He actually mm. got the national award for Sura Ray Potter. Mm. Uh, and, and this guy is, uh, by the way, this guy belongs to a community called Gounders. And yes. Anamalai, mm. if you ask him, he's, he's, a, there, he's, also, he's a Gounder. And he's so is gounder. EPS. EPS yeah. also is a Gounder. Gounder so you yeah. can see that there is mm. a there is a feeling like, I got to capture this particular segment. And, yes, and, yes, yes. And, and mm. I, I won't say much about Surya. I was a good actor. Mm. He was a good actor. <laughs> he was a good actor, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, as far as the dubious sources of funding, Tollywood is no white angel. Uh, Telugu is also no no angel. Okay, so while they might not have this kind of overtly Dravidian whatever ideology based, you know, one sided agenda, lot of uh, you know shady money uh, uh, you know comes into film financing of uh, in Telugu film financing, uh, all kinds of real estate, all kinds of mafia money, uh, you know. They have pushed out all the original good producers like D. Raman yes. Aidu, you know, right. people of that generation. So uh, all those guys have pretty much, you know, taken either taken a back seat or they have taken retirement. Right, right, so right, this, right, right. All these real estate land sharks, uh, you know, gambling guys, this kind of that that kind of money is coming to uh, uh, what is known as Hollywood. So it's not yeah, exactly I, a land of milk and honey. So there are a lot of crap, you know, there's a lot of crap that goes on there also. Viewers, um, if you remember the movies of 80s, Tofa and so on, those are all hmm. directed by uh, Andhra directors, Telugu directors. Jitendra, and they launched Sri Devi and Jitendra. Sri Devi, <laughs> Jitendra, to some extent yeah. Rajesh Kana, to some extent Rajesh Kana, whose career had pretty much exploded by then. Hati so, right, 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 yeah. right, right. <laughs> so look at this. Look, Jitendra was a gold mine for Raghavendra Rao, K. Bapaya, yes. and right. uh, who was that other guy? There was another, some Rama Rao was there, director. So, series uh, of these South Indian uh, uh, Telugu, uh, uh, T. Rama Rao or somebody. So, yeah. series of these uh, Telugu movies which were remade into Hindi. What they, one thing they got right by casting Jitendra and Sri Devi, or Sri Devi was just still new, right? She was from yeah, uh, yeah, a yeah. South Indian face, so to say. So, what they got right was they got the what is known as a Hindi hinterland market. So Jitendra's movies became blockbusters, or at, at least they became money spinners in that market. You know, these guys didn't care if those movies ran in Bombay or Delhi. But their money, their pot of gold was elsewhere. Yes, yes, yes. So true, so true, so true. So um, will 
Bollywood again turn back and start looking at uh, Hindu epics. I mean, Ramayana and Mahabharata were not Bollywood. We have to remember that. Those were television. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Both were yeah. shot by Bolly- Hollywood directors, Bollywood directors, mm. but they were mm. outside that scope. There's a slightly yes, different yes, yes. Uh, look yes. at things. Mm. Uh, what is your prognosis now after RRR, after Bahubali, mm. especially mm. Bahubali? Has mm. it shaken up the Bollywood industry to make them look at, look, this thing is not going to sell anymore, the secular stuff. We need to mm. turn our guns and start looking at what we can find from Panchatantra or mm. Bhagavatam or Mahabharata, mm. Ramayana and so on. What is mm. your gut feeling? Uh, this, is a, this is a really good question, uh, Shri. Last week, if I remember correctly, I mentioned that, you know, there, you know, there is a vacuum now in terms of content, stories and content and, you know, making a uh, screenplay, this kind of thing. There's a vacuum. And Bollywood, the existing legacy Bollywood, I call Karan Johar and gang as legacy Bollywood because I finished. Okay. So they are in a mode, they are in panic mode and they don't know what to do. So what, how they're reinventing themselves is that they are collaborating with people like Raja Maudi. So they have, that is one way to A, stay relevant, B, maintain their financial dominance over the industry. Right, right. Industry right, meaning, right. you know, all aspects of making till release, including distribution. So very lucrative, you know, pipeline, right? So they are unable to make anything original, like I said. So they are collaborating with these guys. Now, the a new breed of filmmakers should come who actually know who are culturally rooted. I remember this fellow saying, uh, who is that guy? Uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui. I don't like him, but he made a valid point. He says, you know, you these buggers write my dialogues in English and, you know, they say, ah, you have to look left and then say this dialogue. So, tum Hindi mein batao na. so he says that, Nawazuddin. I will, how will I get the emotion? If you're giving me directions in English and asking me to speak in Hindi, you can't even explain a scene properly. So you see the levels at which Bollywood has been destroyed. So this breed of deracinated pool of Bollywood, uh, uh, you know, drug drug addicts, they are on their way out, right? There is like I said, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. This kind of you know good sayings. One new breed should come, and we have to wait. But that breed should not look to Hollywood for inspiration. It should not look to the West for inspiration. Like you said, you know, Panchatantra. These fellows, look at the previous generation of uh, uh, Bollywood guys. Salim Javed, Salim Khan, Salman Khan's father. He says, you know, look, at their perception is pretty good. You have to give it to them. He says that, look, I will, there is only one book from which I take all my inspiration for stories, basically. Is Ramayana. Stories. Ramayana. <laughs> so Us so ek hai. <laughs> so I can true, play so with true. my script, you know, just by taking inspiration from that. He said, that's the greatest book ever written. So true. So, so true. Ah, so he could read Ramayana in that original thing. He could he could have a feel for that because he was brought up in the his broader overall cultural environment, you know, shaped him like that. Although he's a hardcore Islamic guy, but that apart, he could succeed because he had the feel for this kind of thing. Purely looking at it as a piece of literature, work of art, that kind of thing. So this, the new breed, uh, you know, which will replace uh, uh, Yascho, who is that fellow, Yash Chopra, son, Aditya Chopra, the new right. breed that will replace them should take a leaf from this. They should know their language. They should know their poems. They should know how to recite a poem properly. They should understand what a traditional theater is. They should have a solid command over our language. Cinema is just a visual medium. And then if they're good at their craft, what you're saying might come up. And, 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 uh, and uh, to add to that, there are some original movies that came in Bollywood. You will mm. laugh your heart out. One of them mm. was Janil Bido Yaro. Yeah, 
there's a scene Very in there clean, about Swami. mahabharat there's a yeah. scene in there yeah the climax <laughs> before the climax yeah, yeah. yeah it's a laugh right yeah Yes, it's a laugh riot. And you'll also recognize many stars who were mm. before they became stars. Mm. Om Puri, right? Om Amrish Puri was Puri. there. Amrish Puri was there. I think mm. Nasiruddin Shah also may have Nasiruddin been there. Nasiruddin Shah was there. Deepthi Nawal was yeah. there. Deepthi Nawal was there. It was an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Kundan Shah was the director. Kundan Shah was there. A very funny series called Yejo Hai Zindagi. Yejo Hai Zindagi. TV Doordarshan. For, for TV. Yeah. Doordarshan, yeah. It was yeah. pretty good in the first few episodes and yeah. then it kind of fell away. Uh, mm. But it was, so th these were, you know, everyday life utterances and, you know, instances and so on. Situation yeah. comedies, sitcoms. Uh, those yeah. are all good. So today... See, look, Amol, Amol Palekar also made a series of these clean comedy movies. Yes, yes, yes. Basu yeah. Chatterjee types. Yeah. Basu Chatterjee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hmm. So this so, this um, is a whole point. But coming back to that, for the longest time, I, like I, I don't know if I mentioned it. I, I must have mentioned it in some other uh, uh, interview. So you can divide Indian cinema, the history of Indian cinema into three broad phases. So the first is the inception thing the 30s, 20s, 30s, that, that period, up to independence. That is, Indian cinema cutoff date, first stage up to independence, and from independence to emergency. That is where you still had, even South Indian movies had this strong attachment to our culture. You said, right, uh, when mentioning Maya Bazaar, those 20, 23 movies, Pauranika and Aitihasika, combined right. NTR yeah. acted in 23 movies. So all those movies, that period ended with emergency. Right? After that, you got this Salim Javed, Amitabh Bachchan, that, you know, disgusting trio, that era which ruled till the late 80s, mostly, or mid-80s. And mid-80s, that and from independence till liberalization. Right. So these are three broad, you know, uh, phases of the history of Indian cinema. If you're talking about uh, beat Bollywood, Bollywood to Choro, that, you know, they're communist and secular and Islamic messaging, that apart. South Indian cinema industry, especially Telugu and Kannada, they stood as the guardians of Hindu culture. You know, speaking in a very, very, very loose fashion. They, they, had, they had that cultural moorings. And the reason Bollywood became Islamist from day one, was Islamist from day one, is precisely can be, you know, uh, if a parallel can be drawn, large parts of North India, there is no original, you know, pristine Hindu culture there. Right. Right. And the reason we have maintained it as because Vijayanagara. There was no Vijayanagara to, you know, stem the tide of these repeated invasions. Here, this empire safeguarded us. And all those vestiges, a lot of these uh, uh, padhyams, both in Kannada cinema and Telugu cinema, even in stage, they are the vestiges of, you know, they are the inheritance of uh, a lot of literature that uh, was composed uh, during the Vijayanagara period. I'm speaking, of course, in a very broad fashion. Uh, you can do an in-depth research and pretty much come to the same conclusion. No, no, you're you're right, uh, Sandeep. So uh, North India, India, yeah, yeah, North we, India we, unfortunately did not have this bulwark. That's why it succumbed to this thing very so soon. You look at it. True, very another true. example. Yeah. Temples are another example. In all of North India, all right. By North India, I include even Gujarat. Correct, correct. North of Vindhyas. Yeah. North of Vindhyas, right? Throughout that, you will not find a single Hindu temple belonging to the classical period. Correct, correct. correct. Classical period pretty much ended with the collapse of Gupta Empire or at least the collapse of, uh, say, the uh, Harshavardhana or the Pratihara. Right, at the right, most right. Pratiharas. At the most Pratihara. You don't find a single classical temple there. So true, so true, so how, true. How many temples that we have still preserved here? That will give you an answer. So all these aspects, cinema, culture, all these, you can't look at them in isolation. That was my uh, limited point. 
No, you're, you're, you're right. And uh, in summary, I think what we are going to see is, you know, market dictates what the content that people will make. And if mm. you, the viewer, say that, listen, I want I want more stories rooted on Indian culture, I'm mm. sure these guys will provide it to you. It is just mm. that you have to be, uh, you know, steadfast. And there mm. is another interesting thing that is coming now. A lot mm. of money is getting laundered through Bollywood movies. Yeah, I think we spoke about this. Yeah, we spoke about this last last episode. In our Mm. last episode. So don't Mm. get taken in. People are Mm. doing clever management and saying that Brahmastra is a big hit. Uh, They can say whatever. Actually, public has given the verdict, right? They can inflate their figures or whatever. Public does, they they don't want to go and watch the movie, right? Ultimately, if you want to make movies as a vehicle for money laundering, do it. No. People won't go. That's all. As simple true, as that. True, true, true. So, um, so we will be back next week, guys, with a different topic, just as engaging as this one. And and certainly, Sandeep we, is a great historian. Sh- yeah, Shri, you ahead. forgot you forgot mentioning one. Uh, rather, we forgot mentioning this Bollywood's yes, fascination in your title. Bollywood's yes, fascination yes. for Oscar. You're right. Absolutely right. We have to talk about that also. Two, three minutes. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, you, you yeah. take the time you need. We, we have no, time. That, no, no, that yeah. it slipped my, my mind. Actually, I was talking about, you know, uh, Indian cinema makers looking at Hollywood for inspiration for everything. You know, it's like some Mecca or Holy Grail or whatever, right? Uh, why is Oscars fine? It's an award ex- recognizing excellence in various aspects of cinema. That's all it is. That's all it is, right? Right, right. So you assuming your movie gets really gets an Oscar, what category will it be in? Best foreign film, right? Correct. And that's why, why everybody. <laughs> right. So who knows? Yeah, Pakistan might get a uh, Oscar if they make a fantastic movie, fantastic biopic on Zia Ul Haq. It's after all a movie, right? Right, right, right. Or Jinnah. So what is his fascination with uh, this? Again, is the product of with deep seated deracination you host some you host some award function like that which which becomes aspirational to them they don't give a damn shri why don't these guys understand it's simple it's clear as daylight you recognize your own excellence right so there is there's a reason india was you know people all over the, the history of in, uh, you know alien invasions into india was premised on two major aspects one three rather one was spirituality second was uh, spirituality philosophy second was education the third but the most important was wealth abundance we set the gold standard in material abundance and manufacturing richness Top quality, you name it, perfume, silk, pottery, China. Well, not China so much, but utensils, artwork, you name it, luxury items. So we were the Oscars to use that parlance, right? True. So there is a Persian uh, uh, puppet theater, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Yeah, I think puppet theater. Uh, I forget the name, Surkha something, I might be wrong, I'll have to look it up. <clears throat> that was a direct lift off from what is known as Mankas in India, which is known as picture showmen. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I don't know if you have heard of this term called Yamapata. No, I have not. Okay. So Yamapata is... Uh, it comes in different shapes, but uh, uh, I'll I'll just you know uh, briefly give it in a capsule form. So you would have a large plank, wooden plank, or a canvas or uh, other material uh, or textile. You would have a wooden plank with miniature paintings. It used to be an elaborate scene of Naraka, right? Like like a snakes and ladders games. So that's a rough analogy I can give. All miniature paintings, which would tell the story. An entire scene which would tell, which would narrate a full story. Yamapata was called so because as the name suggests, 
it was a it was a depiction of naraka on one side from clockwise you would have these panels uh, neatly painted miniature panels that showing all the virtues or the good deeds that a person should do and on and what would be the reward what would be yama's judgment as a result of doing these good deeds and on the other side all the bad deeds evil deeds and what would be the punishment for that so this they were artists who would paint that it used to take sometime months to paint that and they would you know parade it these people are professionals so like there would be utsavs and uh, they used to display it and narrate the story then there would be a story of shri krishna uh, killing putana so that is how it originated uh, sorry shri krishna uh, killing uh, kamsa hmm. wrestling match so that was the origin of this art form this was directly lifted by persia as recently as the 17th century oh wow and it was adapted to uh, the puppet theater tradition in persia so the artists the mankhas they would display these uh, pictures and they would narrate the story at fairs at different uh, uh, alayams even in public places even at houses in villages it was a common practice and they would get some dakshina or you know fees or whatever right this right. was a pan indian phenomenon the patachitra that we see in orissa today thank god it has survived it is one of the variations of this mankha uh, art form so the same thing traveled to indonesia it has a different name but uh, it's not coming to me uh, it starts from j if i'm not mistaken it so this has been our tradition why are you looking at you know things like oscar fine you take good ano batra kritav ante vishwata so you take all the good things in the world wherever they are but have some self respect have some originality especially when you are coming from the civilization which taught storytelling to the world which gave which has continues to feed the world these immortal epics and lore of you know extraordinary lore of literature how hard is it they are there lying in your backyard anyway that's it so uh, a lot of stuff that we can take away from today's episode and uh, sorry guys if we take a bit of a detour once in a while but we know, we almost always find our way back to the theme <laughs> and the theme here is in our opinion the movies from south still preserve a lot of the culture you will have some outliers you will mm. have some uh, other uh, but see the the thing is i was in madurai last weekend and i was so happy that you know people are still very religious i mean sandeep believe it or not in a town like madurai which is what tier 2 or tier 3 tier 2 probably is a pretty big town two, two, two. no one will dream of getting out of the house without putting vibhuti or uh, on, on the yeah. something will some, be there some, on their forehead yeah so, some some lanchana will be yeah mm. some chandan or, or or vibhuti or something will be there yes. and i'll i'll show you one thing i mean this is a letter of requesting help from a certain person and i i hand carried it okay you see the edges hmm. yeah 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 mm. this is not by a religious religious person it was a very poor kid who wanted some help and he gave me this thing so i said i'll see what i can do what i'm trying to say is the religion is very firmly embedded in these places there's an enormous market for this i i think this this is something that we can always rekindle hey sandeep can you believe it the traffic on sundays when mahabharata used to air on the yeah, city city street to street ramayana and mahabharata it used to be empty yeah. empty i so can you, i can I, tell you of many stories actually on the good good you brought this up i can tell you many stories in bombay uh, crowded slums of bombay where you know uh, uh, muslims and hindus you know they used to live together right it used to be one person's house would have a small uh, 13 inch uh, black and white tv right with all the correct, broken correct. Ramana Ramana was early days. So, yeah yeah no. so even even muslims used to watch it and i know of many instances of garwapsis that have happened because mm. of that serial and even mahabharata this is the power so, of the medium absolutely there are many instances of garwapsis and they don't advertise yeah. it so which is good 
<laughs> let's take the good from the west but there is a lot of good right inside us you know to yes. to finish this kabir ka doha kasturi kundal vase mrugdunde banmahi mrugdunde jaise 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 ghat ghat ram hai duniya hmm. dekhe nahi so nahi. we have it within us uh, you, you this is too popular a phrase for me to translate guys if you took hindi classes you know the meaning hmm. of this kabika uh, doha any rate hmm. so thank you so much sandeep it was a pleasure Sandeep's talking pleasure. to you today yeah and and viewers will be back next friday with a, another enchanting topic do give us your support please like hmm. share and subscribe to our channel and don't hmm. forget to click on the bell button for notification once again thank you so very much uh, sandeep thank you shri enjoyed the session thoroughly yeah me too